What do you think of my throne room? He asked her, curious about Halania's response. It is a fitting room for such a powerful and benevolent ruler. Truly fitting for our creator who rules us all. She spoke in reverence without lifting up her head. Come to me, he ordered her. Han watched as she gracefully rose and walked over to him. She appeared like the embodiment of sensuality. His arm would probably break from him patting himself on the back so hard. As she stood in front of him, he was curious if she would react to sexual stimuli. Placing his hands on either side of her hips, he pulled her closer to him. With how submissive she was, he felt himself becoming aroused. He pictured Beth in his mind and felt anger rise up from deep within. How could she cheat on him like that? Imagining how much she enjoyed having intercourse with Sam made Han want to prove something. Leaning back on his throne, he looked at Halania and commanded, Remove your clothing. Halania's breathing became faster as she could see that she was becoming turned on. The way she was beginning to remove the maid outfit made him think that there was nothing comparable on earth. Even adult video had nothing on what he was watching. The way her breasts slightly bounced and jiggled after being released from the restraining outfit. Her hips tilted somewhat to allow the dress to fall to her feet. Aside from her hair and eyebrows, there wasn't a single strand of hair on her body. It was completely smooth and radiated her desires. Leaning forward, Han had his hands glide up her thighs and move to cup her voluptuous buttocks. He could feel how supple they were with a slight firmness from the muscle underneath it. The muscle seemed to ripple under his hands as Halania shifted her weight. Han moved to kiss her flat stomach, tasting her skin on his lips. Hearing her say, Master, that feels good, made him want to continue. Moving his hand, Han proceeded to cup her breasts and grope them. Pulling on them to make her lean forward, he placed his mouth on her left nipple and caressed it with his tongue. His tongue could feel how it was beginning to harden and become erect. Master, I'm starting to feel weird and good all at once. She moaned and placed her hands on his head. She pulled him closer to him as if she could envelop him and never let the feeling go away. Several hours seemed to pass by as Halania continued to enjoy him. Finally, she came for the final time and fell back on top of him. You did such a good job, my beautiful creation, Han whispered into her ear. She moaned in pleasure and cuddled into him. They both sat on top of his throne, basking in the afterglow. From how happy he felt, a part of him realized that this was the needed therapy to get over what Beth did to him. A portion of him just wanted to sit here forever and enjoy this moment, but another part of him wanted to see what the kingdom looked like, the one they were currently in. Deciding to wait until after he rested for a bit, he leaned his head on Halania's and went to sleep, a smile on his face. When he woke up from his nap, he noticed Halania looking at him. Her expression looked adorable, the way she was smiling, remembering how passionately they were joined together. Getting off of him, Halania walked over to where she previously was and went to one knee and lowered her head while she was completely naked. Master, I was unworthy of the gifts you bestowed upon my lowly body. Please, allow me to continue to serve you faithfully until the end of time. Halania shouted, her voice overflowing with emotions. The way she was loyal and devoted to him made himself happy. For the first time in his life, he didn't need to worry about those he loved and cherished betraying him. Han was incredibly thankful for gaining this ability. 
Rise, my beloved creation, he told her, and watched as she rose and showed him a face resembling fanaticism. Often in other religions, the gods would come down to the mortal plane and bed a human woman. Han wondered if he could be compared to those gods, who would lead to the creation of famous demigods. This led him to wonder if she was capable of giving birth, though he shelved this thought for a later time. Halania, you will summon all the floor protectors to appear in front of me, he ordered her. Your will shall be done, master, she answered. She then opened up her own personal menu and began alerting each of the floor protectors to appear in the throne room. Shortly after, the doors to the throne room opened, announcing the arrival of his floor protectors. It seemed like they had somehow already ordered themselves, with Queen leading them. Their order seemed to be based on Queen being first, Anaclis being second, Orasia being third, and Minotauria being last. Though Han didn't specify which sister was the older, it seemed like the elder sister title went to Anaclis. They gracefully approached him and lined up opposite of Halania on the red carpet and knelt in front of him. My beautiful creations, my flow protectors, I wish to impart my desires onto you. He told them in a commanding tone. Your desires are our reason for existing, Master, they answered. Nodding his head at their discipline, he said, You four were created to protect our great stronghold. Each of you will report to Helania, who shall be in charge of all of you. I shall soon be going out to explore the rest of this world. Hearing that he would be leaving the stronghold, all of them, including Helania, began to object. Master, please, you must not leave this paradise, Queen implored, her face looking distressed. Yes, Master, I agree with Queen, Helania spoke up, pleading with him. The rest of the protectors also nodded their heads to signal their agreement. The way they feared for his safety really helped to mend his broken heart. Even his best friends didn't show this much concern for him. I will bring with me both Halania and Queen. The remainder of you will stay and guard this stronghold. You all can communicate with me regardless of where I am. This includes each of you to one another. Before I leave, I will be eating my meal, and while I am eating, I want each of you to create 10 minions that will work for you. If you need additional time, just let me know. These minions will be restricted to 80% of your power, respectively. At the end of the day, you will lose the ability to create, so I expect you to be complete with assignment well before then. Since both Helania and Queen will be coming with me, you too will be given additional time once we return. Also, you will have the ability to entirely alter your flaws to whatever you desire. You will be able to create new structures or what you feel is necessary. These skills will be permanently given to you unless I decide you do not require them anymore. He then signaled to Helania to dismiss them. They walked out of the throne room and off to complete their tasks. Looking at Helania, he alerted her. You should also get ready for this journey. Let one of the waitresses know to bring me the dish I had a while ago. I found it very delicious. I will be in my chambers. Your chambers will be next to mine. He got off of his throne and walked to the side of the throne room where a doorway appeared. Entering into it, a long hallway looked similar to something at the Four Seasons in New York. He imagined a door on the left side wall, picturing the inside to be a luxurious suite. At the end of the hallway was a French door, leading to his chambers. Entering into it, a long hallway looked similar to something like a luxurious hotel in a large city. 
He imagined a door on the left side wall, picturing the inside to be a luxurious suite. The end of the hallway was a French door leading to his chambers. He imagined the room to look like one that he had been to in one of the large cities during his travels. The only difference was that he pictured a force to be outside the windows instead of skyscrapers. Entering his chambers, he was amazed at how picturesque it looked. Thanks to a friend, he had the chance to experience staying at a luxurious hotel room, which is also where he had met Beth. He was at the bar hanging out with some friends when he saw her with her friends. She saw him looking at him and walked over to say hi, and they started talking about themselves and the types of nerdy stuff they were into. As the bar was getting ready to close, she hinted that she wanted to spend some more time with him, so he invited her to his penthouse. When she walked in, Beth was blown away at how amazing everything looked, and she commented on how she felt like a movie star. He remembered them spending the rest of the night going at it like rabbits on the king-size bed. Seeing this room again did bring back some painful memories, but then he remembered how loved he was by his creations, which helped to calm his emotions. Going to the central area, he sat down on one of the many leather chairs and reclined back. As he was thinking about his past, he heard the sound of knocking and figured that it was the waitress bringing him his meal. Lifting a finger, he made the doors into the chambers open by themselves, allowing her to come in. Listening to footsteps walking into the central area, Han saw that the waitress was the same one that previously had served him his meal. Since he randomly created all the supporting staff, though making sure that they were all women, he was pleasantly surprised to see that it was her again. After she had placed the bowl of noodles in front of him, she stepped back to wait until he was finished so she could collect the dish. Looking at her, Han saw that she was lovely. She wasn't voluptuous, but gave that feeling of being the kind of waitress you would want to flirt with and have a wild night in bed. Her breasts weren't as large as the protectors and Helania, but were of a decent size. Her outfit really helped to complement her figure, letting him see her valley. Have you named yourself yet? He casually asked her after eating some of the noodles. No master. I know that some of the other servants, waitresses, and chefs have given themselves names, but I decided to wait until I found an appropriate one. She answered while bowing her head. Continuing to eat his noodles, Han pondered about how she looked similar to the waitress at his favorite Asian restaurant. You'll be named Brittany. Also, you'll be my personal maid. Your duties will be to organize other maids to maintain my chambers, bring me my meals, regardless of where I am, and fulfill any other needs I require from you. You'll also only answer to me, no one else, he commanded her. Brittany's face seemed to blossom with happiness from his new orders for her. Bowing her head, she answered, I will do all you require and offer up my body, heart, and soul to you, master. He continued to eat the remainder of the food while feeling a warm fuzzy feeling inside of his chest. Being a guy, it was always a nice feeling to have a beautiful woman make such a declaration to him. He guessed it may be slightly different considering that she was created by him instead of being a naturally born human woman. It made him think of movies like Weird Science where the characters design the perfect lady. This led him to thinking about how self-awareness was one of the main driving forces of being human, so it really didn't matter if she was naturally born or created. Getting up, feeling content from the delicious food, he told Brittany, Inform Helania that she should be waiting for me in the throne room. Aside from your duties, 
I will message you if I have any needs. He cupped a cheek with one of his hands, feeling her smooth skin and the faint warmth from her blushing. Placing his other hand on the back of her neck, he pulled her towards him and gave her a kiss. The way she received the kiss felt like she was welcoming it and even began using her tongue. The two of them passionately kissed for several minutes before he pulled away and walked out of the room.